How can you improve your progesterone naturally? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. So I'm a fertility doctor and every week on this channel, I come here to help you learn more about your body, your health, your hormones, and your fertility. Today we are diving into progesterone, the luteal phase and understanding what is normal so that you can know when things are not normal and what you can do and tips and tricks to help you have better progesterone naturally or have a better luteal phase. And this is a top question I get asked all the time and it's something that is near and dear to my heart. So excited to dive into this with you. A few quick updates. One is going to be, if you've noticed on this channel now, the As A Woman podcast is finally here. The podcast has been around since 2019. I've had so many people begging for it to go to video and put all my content in one place. So those videos will be releasing in the channel too. And these are great. So if you hear something that you want to deeper dive in, you can search the As A Woman podcast videos. And often this can allow us to go into a lot more depth. I also want to say, please sign up for the newsletter at nataliecrawfordmd.com slash newsletter. I have a lot of really exciting updates coming out. Some of you saw in my shorts a little reveal of something coming, and really there's going to be so much that the newsletter subscribers get first dibs on. And I'm going to show some behind the scenes here, but you want first access. So please go ahead and jump over to the newsletter, and I have the link in the show notes for you. Well, let's talk about progesterone. So if we're going to dive in and talk about progesterone, we have to understand the cycle and what progesterone does to understand how we can fix it. So often I see patients put on progesterone by another provider. So maybe they are having spotting in their period, irregular cycles, they're not getting pregnant, they have random flood levels drawn, they have miscarriage, and somebody, I'm going to believe, who has good intentions prescribes them progesterone. And I've seen so many different variations of this, but often somebody's put on progesterone every single day of their cycle. And you've heard me say this before, this is contraception. Taking daily progesterone is birth control. And that is because your body is not meant to have progesterone every single day of your cycle. Progesterone has a very distinct function and it only happens in the luteal phase. So let's talk quickly about the menstrual cycle so that you can understand because low progesterone, it can be a problem and it's really a sign of an ovulatory issues. It can result in an abnormal luteal phase, abnormal spotting, irregular cycles, can make it harder to get pregnant or even pregnancy loss. So understanding how to ovulate better or if you're ovulating normally is going to be the key. So the simple answer is that progesterone is made from the corpus luteum after ovulation. But to understand this better, I want you to take a step back. So every month you have a group of eggs that are available to grow. Each egg grows inside a follicle and a follicle is a small fluid filled structure in your ovary. The brain sends out follicle stimulating hormone or FSH, which is well named to get a follicle to grow. As that follicle grows, it makes estrogen. And then that estrogen is going to talk back to the brain to tell the brain that the follicle is growing. Remember that the brain can't see what's happening in the ovary. So there's some disconnect. So the brain has to sense the hormone signals the ovary gives it. And in this case, it's progesterone. So when the brain senses a high enough progesterone level, it is then going to send out a surge of a hormone, which means a very high pulse of LH, which is luteinizing hormone. LH is the hormone that in this first surge causes the follicle to rupture. So that cyst bursts, the egg is released, and this is ovulation. After ovulation, the cyst or the follicle reforms, and now it totally changes architecture and function. It now becomes what is known as the corpus luteum. And the corpus luteum's main job is to make progesterone. So it begins to make progesterone at pulses. And this is a really important concept because the brain sends out LH in pulses. It's not a constant steady state signal. And because the brain sends it in pulses, you're going to see progesterone rise and fall throughout the entirety of the luteal phase. Now, if you don't get pregnant, the corpus luteum can only live for about two weeks. Then that cyst is going to collapse. Your progesterone levels are going to drop and you're going to get a period. If you do get pregnant, then the pregnancy, that embryo is going to implant in your uterus and begin to make a hormone called HCG or human chorionic gonadotropin. And you know this hormone because it's the one that you can check on a pregnancy test. 
Very interesting fun fact is that HCG and LH, they share a receptor. So HCG can come into those LH receptors and stimulate progesterone production as well. So we say that the pregnancy rescues the corpus luteum, but also instead of having a pulsatile stimulus like you had before, now you have a constant and increasing stimulus from the pregnancy because a normal growing dividing pregnancy has an exponentially increasing HCG stimulus and now progesterone will increase as well. So progesterone has a really key job of opening and closing the implantation window and maintaining the pregnancy until the placenta is all the way grown in and established, which is around nine to 10 weeks. So progesterone is essential for getting pregnant. It's essential for your normal communication as well, because if the corpus luteum starts to die earlier than the two weeks, you're going to have not as much progesterone produced. This can make the lining of the uterus less stable. It can make the luteal phase, the time period from ovulation till your next bleed, shorter. This can make it harder to get pregnant. You can have more spotting in that luteal phase, so prolonged spotting before your period begins. And you can also have just irregularity to your cycles, potentially early miscarriage, or just more mood swings and feeling like you're off. Even though I said earlier that people will just put somebody on progesterone, number one, progesterone is not always the answer. Progesterone can be a band-aid. It's not necessarily wrong, but it's not getting to the root cause, and it's obviously not something natural that you're doing. If you are put on progesterone or anybody tells you to take it, here is my big warning. You must take progesterone after you've ovulated. If you are starting progesterone every month on a set cycle day without knowing if you've already ovulated, if you're taking progesterone every single day, even if you're given different doses in the follicular and the luteal phase, that is not ideal. So we really need to know that you're supposed to have no progesterone until after you ovulate when that corpus luteum starts making progesterone. If we want to think about how do we naturally help this, I always want to say, number one, we want to rule out true medical causes because not everything can be done naturally. Things like high prolactin, which is a hormone from the pituitary gland or abnormal thyroid hormones can absolutely cause some short luteal phase or abnormal progesterone production. And the key there is going to be to treat the root cause. So we want to rule out other causes of abnormal ovulation. We also want to then think about how is our ovulation? How can we support it? I'll often say that there's a lot that falls into what I call hypothalamic dysfunction, meaning your hypothalamus is in your brain and it communicates to the pituitary gland. And a lot of people have heard of HA or hypothalamic amenorrhea. This is where your brain is shut off, sending off no hormones so you don't ovulate at all. But it's really more like a dimmer switch, meaning things start to lose their communication before it's totally shut off. And I find a lot of patients in that zone where they are stressing their system, whether it is from chronic stress, whether it's from chronic inflammation, whether it's from high blood sugar levels, insulin resistance, these things all interfere with our brain's ability to sense our hormones. So since progesterone is only made after ovulation and it's a sign of an ovulation disorder, we want to make sure that we're supporting our ovulation. So this is going to be mitigating everything that we can. We're going to want to consider making sure that we decrease insulin resistance, which is a huge sign of inflammation in a lot of people's bodies. This can be more common with PCOS, but it's not only seen with PCOS. This relates back to gut health as well, because your gut is that integrity between the food that you eat and your body. And if your gut starts to lose its integrity, you're going to have higher inflammatory markers and every single thing you eat is going to potentially result in higher inflammation, especially if we're eating things like refined foods, processed carbohydrates, ultra processed foods, sugars, and a high diet in animal meats because there's no fiber. Fiber is high in your fruits and vegetables, and that's really going to be a key to combating some of this insulin resistance. We also want to think about how do we reduce stress? So we all are different, but chronic stress does cause inflammation. It does send static back to the brain. So whether that is a walk, journaling, meditation, therapy, talking to your best friend, we're all a little bit different, but you need to think about something to help you disconnect, get away from your phone and let your brain feel like you have the emotional and physical reserves to ovulate normally and support a pregnancy. We also don't wanna be stressing our body out by over-exercising. Exercise and strength training and building muscle is key 
your skeletal muscles, your biggest organ in your body, it can really help with that insulin metabolism and your metabolic health and fighting insulin resistance. So more muscle is good. But too often I see patients really swing and overtrain. So you want to learn how to listen to your body, especially in this luteal phase that you're not overdoing it because naturally progesterone is supposed to slow you down. Your body wants to conserve some calories so that it can get pregnant if a pregnancy implants. So this is not the ideal time to be training for a marathon or going all out. Also, when it comes to nutrition and supplements, there's data out there that certain supplements or nutrients can support healthy progesterone production. And of course, this all goes back to helping you have better ovulation. In the perfect world, you're going to get these nutrients from foods, but let's think about them. Vitamin B6 can improve progesterone levels. There was a small study done supplementing with vitamin B6, and it improves some progesterone blood levels, which aren't my favorite, but also lengthen the luteal phase in some women. So vitamin B6 can be found in chickpeas and bananas and salmon, but you can also supplement if it's something that you're low in with a B-complex vitamin. Magnesium is another one. Magnesium helps support your adrenal glands, which make your stress hormones, and those are key in progesterone synthesis. So think about magnesium from your dark leafy greens, your nuts, your seeds, even dark chocolate. Now, zinc is really important for healthy ovulation and corpus luteum function. A study looked at zinc and showing that zinc deficiency impairs follicle growth. And the follicle, of course, makes the corpus luteum. So we want to look at making sure that you have enough zinc in your diet. And this is something that I personally supplement. You can find zinc in things like oysters, pumpkin seeds, lentils, but it's something that I personally take a supplement for. Vitamin C is something that is an antioxidant. Many people have heard of vitamin C. A study did find that 750 milligrams of vitamin C increased your progesterone blood levels and they improved pregnancy rates. So this was an older study, but it was well done. And so vitamin C is relatively benign, can definitely help improve progesterone production. The thought is by decreasing some of that inflammation or oxidative stress. And we know vitamin C is in things like your fruits, your citrus fruits, especially strawberries, even bell peppers. And then melatonin is another one. And I'm a big fan of melatonin. It's a very powerful antioxidant and it can help you sleep. I recommend if you take it, you don't take too much. You want to take less than three milligrams and you want to take it 30 minutes before you want to go to bed. But a study did look at supporting progesterone production during the corpus luteum. So Definitely, we know that progesterone production is on a circadian rhythm, and if you have better circadian rhythm, you sleep better and consistently, this can be helpful. But always want to be careful that you're not overdoing it with melatonin because too much can actually impact your brain's function as well. And then I just want to give a nod to healthy fats in general. There's a lot of talk about protein and protein's importance in your hormones, but all your steroid hormones have a cholesterol backbone. So healthy fats are actually really, really important. And having a super low fat diet where you're eliminating a lot of fat can actually impact your ability to make progesterone and other hormones. So really lean towards those healthy fats, those olive oils, nuts, avocados. Don't think about everything having to be low fat like we used to do. So none of this research is perfect, but it's just giving you the idea that the consistent thing here is a healthy diet, whole foods, and fruits and vegetables can help support your ovulation, which can help you make more natural progesterone. So ask questions below. I know that you have them and I'll be happy to answer more questions as they come along. Thank you guys so much for your support. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter at nataliecrawfordmd.com newsletter and listen to the As A Woman podcast. Thank you, friends.